Okay, for the deep water culture system, we're going to go through some of the inventory lists that we used. We used one inch pipe uh, for the drain, which is a little bit small. That's what we had. One and a quarter inch is actually what it is, one and a quarter inch. Then we have half inch water line that we're using to feed each of the buckets to recirculate it. And then we have a valve on each bucket to control the flow going into the bucket itself. Um, 55 gallon drums on the bottom so there's uh, five gallon buckets holding the water 55 gallon drum as the reservoir and then we have inside there we have a water pump and an air stone there. keeping enough aeration is uh, key to running a system like this we have some elbows and um, three ways for the one and a quarter inch pipe and then we have the three inch baskets for uh, growing the, the product itself for the, for the stuff. Stuff, yeah, the plants. We tried three different types of media. We had pea gravel, which is right here. We had a smaller clay, which is for aquaponics. And then we tried the clay balls. And what we found is each one of them has pros and cons. The clay balls are the best because they don't allow the water to reach the surface. Because otherwise you start to have issues with algae growth and such. The, this, as you can see, it's still moist on top. So it's not a good media and it's, it's messy. It gets through the basket and will clog or settle on the bottom of wherever, whatever's on it. Pea gravel is a pain in the rear. It's cheap, but it messes with your pH. And it's dirty it's hard to clean uh, it is a little bit bigger so it doesn't fall through as bad but it still falls through the baskets um, I would recommend I got a whole bunch of these baskets but I would recommend for the larger plants definitely go into a larger basket for a larger root um, basically for, so that the, the plants crown at the base has more foot, footing to establish better roots uh, that's just a better way to do it but I had these, so I tried them, and you have to tie them down or they fall over because they're not big. Um, with the rail system here, again, uh, kind of an issue is the plant gets so huge that it will start to topple over. Here's the lettuce I never picked. We just keep picking lettuce off of it and um, wanted to see how big it got. I never actually let lettuce grow like this, so it was kind of an interesting thing. Uh, but we use it for a lot of dinners. so. If we had more lettuce all the way through, we'd have literally any, just with a few pods, we'd have enough for just about everything. The broccoli here is tipping over. And as they get bigger, we move them over to the large bucket system. If you're gonna start this, I would recommend something of the larger capacity like this so you don't have to keep moving them. Uh, we do have strings up to hold them up, especially for like the beans uh, and such where they will spider up the up the rope itself tomatoes are huge again these smaller root baskets are a definite fail because <laughs> it's really tough for these to to grow up when they don't have a good solid base so bigger bigger cups would be best i have my little portable grill here just to kind of keep some of my supplies um, what i do with uh, this is the pH meter, so it reads the pH of the water. Check it. Um, when you're starting out, you check it every day. Once you got a good read on how your fertilizers and such are going to go, then you uh, you can leave it for a few days at a time. This is a dissolved solid meter, so it it reads how many dissolved solids are in the water, parts per million, um, and so this is going to tell you when it's time to keep adding your liquid fertilizers um, and then pretty much again this is kind of stuff I could get rid of because I don't use any of this anymore but when we were first going out you know checking for leaks and all that stuff making sure everything was solid um, is what we would do here's the air pump so this is a $50 air pump that is supplying air to all three um, and we have additional lines here 
it was actually cheaper to buy one fifty dollar air pump than three twenty dollar air pumps and you get better performance out of this you can also run the air intake through something to cool it down if you wish um, but being outdoors I didn't really need to do that for indoor stuff you would have to use a chiller or something in some situations but again the buckets just fly down in there uh, the pumps that we have I can show you better in this in this guy so I have a return tube I actually have two additional return tubes in the rail system let's bring the pump up here so it's just a basic water fountain pump and then the key here is to make sure that it has an adjustable flow rate and um, you know these are anywhere from ten to thirty dollars start getting into the fifty hundred dollar ones you got a lot of big pump action it really depends on what you're trying to use uh, I definitely like the bucket system over the rail system the rail system again is more designed for um, you know the smaller herbs and that kind of stuff where you could start your stuff there and move them there but uh, now that I've done this and have the disciplines of both of these I definitely would like the buckets um, I have started to self pollen I've started to pollinate each of these with a q-tip to speed the process along but most of the bees and such have been doing a good job with that for the posts, I'm just using 4x4s, and then I had some old cedar boards um, from some old LARP stuff, and some 4x8s, particle board. Um, they didn't really hold all that great, but again, it was just stuff where I could do this at a low cost. You can get a lot of this wood refurbished at restores and such, but uh, they're not terribly expensive to buy if you're going to do it. Now... This is off, you'll notice that this kind of goes at a slant. It's very tall. That's because the slope of my grass, my lawn, I have a, I have a I'm out of grade here. So it's really hard to level stuff out. And when I did level it, you can see to compensate for the grade, it's much higher over there than it is over here. What I would like to do when I do this next season is I would like to somehow try to recess these buckets down so that it's easier to harvest the fruit. However, I did make this strong enough with enough of these, um, taking these boards and actually making them like trussing to walk down the middle. So if I wanted to walk down the middle, I could actually stand up on it and then it's not so big of a deal. But it's always safer when you're on the ground, so that's what we're going to try to plan for next year now the buckets I used uh, the barrels um, the product that was stored in there before was uh, organic it was kind of like a soybean so uh, you got to be careful when you use used buckets to make sure that whatever was in there before is food grade or potable and I prefer the white barrels and then you actually um, paint them as opposed to the blue barrels or the black barrels but it's really up to you uh, you just want to try to make it as safe as possible I'm gonna probably go from PVC the schedule 40 PVC to the black schedule 80 PVC uh, next year while these there's nothing saying that you can't use these there's always a debate in the community about you know it's not rated for potable liquids um, the schedule 80 is uh, I mean everybody's growing them in these schedule 40 tubes anyway but um, I'm trying to set myself up on the uh, basis of doing this um, possibly commercially so everything I do like these are food safe buckets they have a rating on them it actually says food safe with a with a rating on them um, while the PVC is uh, safe it I would rather use the well water plastic which is basically what most people know this as if you live out in the country um, instead of this white stuff so i'd use the black stuff which is schedule 80 that's actually rated for potable liquid and uh, let's take a look inside some of the buckets now i did spray paint to uh, what i did is i spray painted all the lines and everything and the reason i did that was to keep the keep the uv out the uv rays once you start allowing sunlight inside your water areas, you'll start to get, you know, algae growth and such. 
So if we take a look inside one of these buckets that are running, I had this set up for strawberries, I just hadn't gotten them yet. Um, I have an intake here, or an out, you know, the, um, the water's coming out here with the valve that I can control it with. And then this is nigh um, where it's gonna suck back up. I did have stuff in here before, and you can see that old media uh, with, the, with the balls, I wouldn't have any of those, those clay, clay balls. But these drains actually drain from the bottom. And you can actually, I built them so that you can put like a cheesecloth sock around it. You have to protect the water um, um, exit for, you know, otherwise the roots are gonna actually climb up through here, through here. They'll actually make it all the way down to your 55 gallon reservoir on some plants. Now there's a hole up here, and the reason why there's a hole is so um, it doesn't siphon. So if I would hold this off and let it get tall enough, it'll actually siphon out all the way into the bucket itself. Um, that's great for cleaning. That's why we just made it a hole so it's, it can be covered so we can clean them out really quick. But that's kind of the, the deal with that. Again, food safe buckets. You can use the handles and the sides to secure your plants. This plant right here, um, <laughs> funny story, we had uh, some 50 mile an hour wind gusts the other day with some pretty heavy storms. And uh, this guy bailed, sh jumped ship, it bailed. It was on the ground right here. And um, put it back in and it came out one more time. So now we latched it down. But most of these zucchinis are actually latched to the bucket, not to the rate, not to the ropes, because their leaf and their um, structure of the plant doesn't really allow for doing what I'm doing here. I'm like hanging this one. It's like on a hanger's noose, poor thing. But uh, it has recovered. It's it's definitely gone through a uh, a period of massive wilt, but it has been recovering and uh, on all that. So when you're, and your leaves will tell you a lot about what, when you're in hydroponics, they're gonna tell you what type of minerals you're gonna need in the, in the actual system. So when you have holes like this, if it's, if it's actually coming apart from something that's uh, in the, you know, it's not an insect or anything, this is telling you that it's, so, um, I think it's magnesium that it needs or something. There's, there's a plant guide, I can post it in the bottom of this video of, the plant leaves will tell you what it's what it's lacking. This is some white. So again, um, I have to adjust the nutrients to meet the plant's needs. And when you're trying to set this up, be sure to look at what the pH levels and recommended dissolved solid levels are for types of plants. Tomatoes are a little bit more acidic. They like, you know, lower pH. Some of these other plants would be okay in a higher pH, a more basic water system. So if you have everything in a rail that's all connected, you want to have the same kind of plants in the rail, which is what most people do, or things, the types of plants that can adapt to that water level. So essentially we have two separate systems here on two separate buckets. So I could actually set these up differently if I needed to. And then the rail system is set up differently as well. So this kind of gives you a little bit more of an overview about what we used. Um, it's not, uh, you know, it's, I mean, there's definitely some cost to it, but once you have it set up, I mean, now, you know, these buckets will be good for forever, really. Um, one thing I do want to mention, too, is if you do do this, I would definitely recommend you taking, A, don't paint this because it flakes off and then you got to pull it out. I mean, it's not going to really hurt the plant or nothing, but um, make your, your uh, water spout higher so that it never is touching where the drain is because otherwise you could actually get roots to climb it back in there. I don't know how aggressive of a flow a root can fight, but I'm guessing it's pretty good. So that's the only thing I'd probably change on the, the way I did the drains. And some of them I did do that way and some of them I, I made too level. So yeah, there we go. If you have any questions, post them below this video and I'll be happy to help you as I learn how to do hydroponics.